And the roll hoop and the halo very much doing its job before the car digs in and you do not ever want to see accidents like that. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at the 10 worst crashes in F1 history. Big fire there as they exited out of turn three. And that looks very nasty indeed. And unsurprisingly, that is a red flag. For this list, we're looking at the most devastating crashes to take place in F1. Sadly, because some of these crashes resulted in deaths. A content warning is now in effect. Which of these crashes had you covering your eyes? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Lorenzo Bandini at the 1967 Monaco Grand Prix At the 1967 Monaco Grand Prix, Lorenzo Bandini was trailing in second place behind Denny Holm when he lost control of the vehicle and crashed. Now Bandini. Now Bandini's crashed! Good lord, look at that. Uh, the car, it looks like it's upside down, Phil. The car flipped and its fuel tank broke, which resulted in the car bursting into flames. Marshall struggled with rescuing Bandini as the flames constantly grew and made the task all the more difficult. Although Bandini was eventually pulled out of the vehicle, he had still sustained third degree burns. He was taken to the hospital, but sadly he passed away three days later. He was 31 years of age. Gilles Villeneuve, the 1982 Belgian Grand Prix. Near the end of the qualifier session of this edition of the Belgian Grand Prix, Gilles Villeneuve aimed to improve his position and lap time, so he attempted to cut another racer. There was clearly confusion as to which side he should complete the maneuver. He went right and hit the vehicle he attempted to pass. Villeneuve's car flipped several times, and the subsequent impact was so devastating, it resulted in Villeneuve being launched out of the vehicle. He was rushed to the hospital, but hours later it was announced that he had passed away. Jules Bianchi, the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix. In F1 races, one crash often leads to another, but none have been under such unusual circumstances. During a lap of this race, as a result of weather conditions, Sauber's Adrian Sutil would go off the track and hit a wall. A crane was used by marshals to remove the vehicle. During the removal process, Marusha's Jules Bianchi wound up driving directly into the crane. He was unconscious and was subsequently placed in intensive care. He later passed away as a result of the head injuries he sustained during the accident. He will be much missed in the Formula One paddock. Ronnie Peterson, the 1978 Italian Grand Prix. Crashing the vehicle he was meant to drive at the race during a practice session, Team Lotus's Ronnie Peterson was forced to drive an older model instead. Along with his vehicle facing technical difficulties, the main race began as the flag was dropped before all the cars were in their respective positions. The ensuing havoc and confusion caused by the error resulted in Peterson's vehicle colliding with a McLaren driven by James Hunt. Peterson's Lotus would then hit a barrier and burst into flames. Hunt and several crew members were able to get Peterson out of the vehicle and he was rushed to the hospital. The next morning, Peterson was pronounced dead as a result of a fat embolism. Romain Grosjean, the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix. During the first lap of this race, Romain Grosjean's vehicle clipped Daniel Kvyat's Alfa Tori's left front wheel. Grosjean's car was sent reeling and crashed into a metal barrier. It was sliced in half and caught on fire. That's extraordinary. Yeah. It's just the car has gone through the barrier, you see. The car's gone through the barrier. Despite all odds, Grosjean was able to remove his race boot, escape the vehicle, and ultimately save himself. Surprisingly, he left relatively unscathed having only suffered minor burns and spraining his left ankle. Having only been inside the vehicle a mere 28 seconds after the crash had occurred, it is truly a miracle that he survived and was able to escape an almost certain fate. I thought about my kids and I said, no, I cannot die today. Alberto Ascari, the 1955 Monaco Grand Prix. Trailing behind Sterling Moss in this race for the lead, Alberto Ascari was in luck when the engine of Moss's Mercedes broke down. The opportunity to take the lead, however, was missed, as Ascari's vehicle swerved out of control, crashed through a barrier, and directly into the Mediterranean Sea. Ascari has overshot the chicane. 
The car has somersaulted straight into the harbor. The car sank, but fans breathed a sigh of relief when Ascotti appeared on the surface. He was subsequently rescued and hauled out of the water. A motor launch has picked Ascari up and he is brought over to the harbor side where an ambulance is waiting. Despite the harsh nature of the crash, Ascari came out of the whole ordeal with a broken nose and some bruises. Wolfgang von Trips, the 1961 Italian Grand Prix. On the second lap of the Italian Grand Prix race in 1961, two cars on the track came in contact with one another. While one of the cars, driven by Jim Clark, came to a halt, the other, driven by Wolfgang von Trips, was spinning out of control and struck a section of spectators, 15 of whom were killed. Von Trips was thrown out of the vehicle and did not survive the accident. Despite this horrific sequence of events, the race continued, and Von Trips' teammate, Phil Hill, went on to win the race. Some drivers only became aware of the crash and its severity after the race, leaving many to question why it had not been stopped. Niki Lauda, the 1976 German Grand Prix. One of the greatest and biggest stars to ever get behind the wheel, this Austrian legend was involved in one of the most horrific accidents in F1 history. During the second lap of the race, out of nowhere, Lauda's car swerved out of control and caught on fire. Several drivers and staff assisted in pulling Lauda out of the vehicle, but despite escaping, he received severe burns all over. And the initial prognosis was that he had little chance of survival. The nature of his injuries was such that a priest was called to administer the last rites. Even though he was in critical condition and went into a coma, Lauda remarkably survived the ordeal and would make an incredible comeback after six weeks, and he later went on to win two more world titles. Ronnie Ratzenberger, the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. At the conclusion of this afternoon's final qualifying session for tomorrow's San Marino Grand Prix, I sadly have to report that the news is bad. During a qualifying session of the San Marino Grand Prix in 1994, the nose wing of this 31-year-old's vehicle had gotten detached. The car subsequently went off the track and slammed directly into a barrier. Ratzenberger had suffered a skull fracture so severe, he was pronounced dead shortly after medical staff arrived at the site of the crash. It was the first time that we have to face a dead Formula One driver for our generation. The whole atmosphere was very heavy that afternoon, you know, and everybody was thinking about what, what are we doing here or what's the point, you know. Worst of all, many believe the tragedy could have been prevented, as Ratzenberger was aware of the issue with his vehicle, but opted to complete another lap instead. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be the last tragedy to take place at the 1994 Grand Prix in San Marino. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Ayrton Senna, the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. Alex Senna, my goodness! I just saw him plunge off to the right. What on earth happened there? I don't know. On lap seven of the main race, Brazilian and three-time champ Ayrton Senna had taken a comfortable lead over Benetton's Michael Schumacher. At one point coming up on the corner, he attempted to make a turn, only for his vehicle to skid off the track and crash into a wall. The accident was so devastating, the car's front wheel and nose were torn off. Ayrton ran out of luck. He did not have a broken bone in his body. He did not have any bruising. If that piece of assembly would have gone six inches higher or six inches lower, he would have walked back to the paddock. Although he was pulled out of the vehicle, he was in critical condition, and despite receiving medical treatment, it was to no avail, and he passed away later that evening. He was special. I mean, he was not one step. He was two steps better than everyone else. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.